have sent her my way. When she nestles in my arms so tenderly, there's a thrill that words cannot express. In my heart, a song of love is haunting me, melody haunting me. Sweet and lovely, sweeter than the roses in May. The Diary of Norman Clegg, aged 18 years. Last night was the annual co-op dance. I was walked home by Anita Pillsworth. <laughs> he was very late home last night. There's another RAF plane crashed. They seem to crash a terrible lot. It was gone 11, way past 11. In the past six months, there have been more than 11. <laughs> I think it's all the learners. You'd think, while they're only learning, they'd keep them closer to the ground. I think it's a bit <laughs> the annual co-op dance. Well, I suppose they're preparing for war. If it doesn't come soon, we're not going to have any aeroplanes left. <laughs> we hope that the Jerrys are still only learning as well. <laughs> Morning, Mother. Don't morning, Mother me. <laughs> you were very late last night. Well, you can't just walk out on the annual co-op dance. I don't like you out alone at nights when there's a war coming. They don't start wars at that time of night. To save electricity, everybody has to get up early. <laughs> anyway, I wasn't alone. I was walked home by Anita Pillsworth. Put your paper down, did you hear that? <laughs> he was walked home last night by somebody called Anita Pillsworth. Well, only as far as the gate. <laughs> Ask him. Ask him what? Ask him who's Anita Pillsworth. She works in accounts. Oh, that's a responsible job. Don't you dare start encouraging him when you don't know a thing about the girl. How old is she? I think she's 19. Oh, my God, he's mixed up with an older woman. <laughs> It's all that dreamy music. You get carried away. Morning, Sherbert. Morning, Cleggy. Hey, you were doing all right last night. I wasn't doing all right. I was practically kidnapped. Besides, what about you with Ivy from Grocery and Provisions? It's all that dreamy music. You get carried away. Anyway, that was last night. It's back to reality this morning. Anita! Norman! I thought we might walk to work together. Don't mind me. I was just going. Swine. <laughs> That's made a right impression there, Cleggy. You didn't have to leave me alone with that. <sighs> Here, I'm a terribly couple. Very shortly, I'm going to be wearing a uniform like that. Give over. No, I drive a three-wheeler. Find the plane can't be all that different. <laughs> Three's a crowd. I learned something else last night. Sometimes two's a crowd. Cheer up, Cleggy. Supposed to send your heart all a flutter. Morning, Sherbet. <laughs> Cheer up, Sherbet. It's supposed to send your heart all a flutter. <laughs> I don't see any reason to be modest about it. I'll tell her. That's what I'll do. I'll tell her. Deborah, I'm going to be a fighter pilot. Then she'll be proud to let me take her out. <laughs> I almost learned a foxtrot. I missed the right tasty piece last night because I couldn't foxtrot. Aye. Me and Cleggy need to learn some fancy footwork and all. It's all that damn dreamy music. Hmm. I like dreamy music. Yeah. 
But then you're a total willy. <laughs> I don't like the way girls hold your elbow. You say one nice word and the next thing, they're holding your elbow. What nice word? I think it was, excuse me. <laughs> I trod on the foot while we were dancing. Who's gonna learn us to foxtrot? Oh, any fool can foxtrot. Come here. <laughs> did you see Sherbet at the dance last night? Well, yeah. I suppose I did, briefly. Can't say it was very high on the list of priorities of what I was looking for. All dressed up in his suit. How oh, different. He didn't look any different to me. Nearly good looking. There's a lot of difference between nearly and what it should be. You give one of these bags to a customer and it's nearly a pound, see what response you get. <laughs> anyway, he's always got boils. I know. Maybe that's what it is. When you see something in pain, you can't help wanting to mother it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be more than satisfied with the item you just purchased. It's something whose quality I can personally guarantee. Oh, yes. <laughs> Manufactured in the society's own factories, what you've got there is an item for life. None of your Japanese copies. Oh, no. <laughs> They're on the borders of Hong Kong. Did you see that in the papers? Threatening to blockade us. They get very excitable on a diet of rice. <laughs> well, I, I have to be going now, Mr. Scrimshaw. Items of cooperative manufacture are the envy of the commercial world. Oh, yes. And why are they the envy of the commercial world? It's because of the caliber of cooperative management. Of course. <laughs> it's the care taken by cooperative management that ensures that you can take that item home today with a feeling of confidence in its reliability. Yeah. Well, I'll be taking it home now, then, uh, Mr. Crimshaw. I always feel that the level of cooperative management is an example to the civilised world. Yes. Mind you, it extracts a great deal in wear and tear from those of us who take our responsibilities seriously. We <laughs> have to be on top of everything, all the time. <laughs> well, off you go, then. Can't stand here gossiping all day. And my regards to Mrs. Uh, damn, it was on the tip of my Ridley. Uh, Redhill. And of course to Mrs. Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think you were doing, lad? I will not have junior staff gliding up and down. It's the duty of junior staff to walk small, lad, humble, looking oppressed and terrified. Well, I, I, I was just sort of carrying it, Mr. Scrimshaw. <laughs> Carry it? It was jumping up and down, twisting round and round. Well, it's not easy to get a grip, Mr. Scrimshaw. I will not have display dummies in my store carried in that up-and-down, irregular manner. You looked as if you were dancing with it. <laughs> you can smile, lad, when I make a little pleasantry. You don't have to stand there with your face all gloomy when your superior makes a little pleasantry of that nature. It is permissible to laugh, you know. I'm not an ogre. <laughs> I'm only human, lad. I said it looked as if you were dancing with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dancing with it. How was it, the co-op dance? It was so-so. You get all dressed up for people to tread on your feet. Mm, I couldn't go. I had to work late. The Norbrys were having a dinner party. I think they must scour the countryside for people with big appetites. I didn't miss much. Well, I miss Seymour Utterthwaite. I've made me mind up I was going to nail him at the co-op dance. I always think he's a bit simple. Tall and good-looking and a bit simple. Sounds a reasonable combination to me. Did you dance with Wally? He's always under your feet. Short and good-looking and simple. Two out of three is not bad. <laughs> I know how you feel, kid. I'm short in leg and all. <laughs> Whose is it? Oh, it belongs to them I work for. She can't sit about all day, clutched to her bosom. <laughs> how come you never use words like bosom? <laughs> 
uses it that often. If I didn't take it for a walk, it'd lose the use of its legs. Not lost its voice, has it? It acts a lot for a little short house. Look who's talking. <laughs> well, I'll leave you two lovebirds. You see, everybody knows. It's fate. It's a fate worse than death. Any good points? Well, point them somewhere else. You'll be sorry. I might not be tall, but I'm a tower of strength. <laughs> You're a tower of what? You want to snatch me while the going's good. I'm in a reserved occupation. If all the lads go off to war, I might soon be the only available bachelor around here. Then there'll be a queue. Well, there won't be me in it. <laughs> well, that's Foggy. Foggy's the military expert. Oh, he's a total willy. Well, yes, he's a total willy, but he's also the military expert. Oh, but he's in the army. Now, I want the RAF. Oh, they have collars and ties. And they crash a lot. My dad's been reading it in the paper. Well, if they let blokes like Seymour in, it's not surprising they crash a lot. I'm not going to crash a lot. I'm going to be an ace. And he's doing it all for Deborah Norbury. <clears throat> Miss Deborah Norbury. Ooh. <laughs> hey, old foggy! <laughs> I've been two hours on that sign. If the highways foreman sees it, he'll shout at me. I hate civilians shouting at me. I tell thee, he's a total willy. What do you want? Your military advice. We rang the war office and they said we should ask you. <laughs> oh. Well, if it's military, you've come to the right place. As long as it's not classified information, I'm not allowed to talk about classified information. Nimble on the feet in the infantry, aren't they? <laughs> it's Seymour. He wants to be a fighter pilot. And we don't think he'll get in. He ain't got qualifications. Plus, he's another total willy. <laughs> what qualifications? Well, that's what we want to find out. What qualifications does he need to be a fighter pilot? You don't want to be a fighter pilot. Yes, I do. It's a very sissified way to fight a war as a fighter pilot. <laughs> you might as well take up embroidery, something like that. I don't know why we're asking him. He's a total willy. No, the only way to fight a war is as your basic infantryman. Close quarters, gold steel. He wants to fly, Foggy. What qualifications does he need? He'd have to be Barbie for a start. <laughs> well, I think he can manage that one. And they have to have a good head for heights. I've got a head for heights. And they have to manage not to be sick when they spin them round in this chair. What for? They're not flying chairs. To make sure they don't get air sick. Well, I'm sick of listening to this. No, I I've seen it on the newsreels. They spin them round in this chair, dead fast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the national programme. Here is the news. A general outline of the arrangements to be made for calling up militiamen and reservists was issued by the War Office today. Ah, ah. During the first fortnight of that training... Are you all right, Mr. Clay? Uh, oh, oh, yes, I... <laughs> I get these rheumatics. That must be difficult in your <laughs> trade. Yes, yes, thank you. It is difficult in my trade. ...as early as possible. Oh, no, no. <laughs> The men will then be placed in one of three graves. He's seen it on newsreels. If you want to be an air crew, they put you in this big chair and spin you around terrifically fast. That's not going to go fast. Well, give it a try. Find out if that's a natural for air crew. I know I'm a natural for air crew. What test are they have for cowards? I bet I'm a natural at being a coward. <laughs> that will be right, Cleggy. There'll be some little jerrys I can have a go at. Not if they're vicious. I don't want any vicious little jerrys. How about ladies? How big? 
Come on, Seymour. Sit this end down, Biggles. If thou wants to be an air crew, thou's got to have stomach for it. Oh, I've got the stomach for it. I've also got the height and attractive profile. <laughs> Now is the time to buy. A small deposit will secure. <laughs> Very wise of you to come at this time. In the event of hostilities, all this stuff will disappear, you know. Oh, yes. They'll all be making car key. There'll be no time for your fancy lapels. Civilian stuff will be like gold. How fortunate the civilian will be who bought his new suit before the quality deteriorated. <laughs> As it does, inevitably, in war. I remember the last lot. You couldn't get a decent worsted. If my emerald had not been so adept with her needle, <laughs> I'd have been hard-pressed in keeping the old pecker up. Please feel free to come inside where my assistant will gladly show you without any obligation whatsoever the style books and patterns. <laughs> What's my chair doing here? <laughs> I keep telling them, don't leave things lying about. Put things away. <laughs> They're just the wrong age for putting things away. <laughs> Service, please. Forward, Mr. Utterthwaite. <laughs> Step forward, Mr. Utterthwaite. Bring the style books. <laughs> been drinking. So we'll pick on you for a while. He'll have forgotten all about it this time next year. If I can sneak away from me dad and get out to gardening tonight, are we off to flicks? I can't go. Got no. Oh, not again. I don't know where my money goes. It goes on fags and lasses. That got out wasted it then. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't help you tonight. Me neither. Oh, well, I've got nothing. I spent it on petrol. I've only got enough for myself, and that's it. Me too. It's all right. I, I'll go and sit on a wall or something. Oh. No, no, it's all right. I, I'll, I'll see you when you come out. Will you stop it. You're breaking me out. I'll stay in and wash me ferry. <laughs> we can't go without him. All right. We'll sneak him in somehow. Well, I blocked that window we used to crawl through. There's one on the roof. We'll try the one on the roof. Say goodbye to your friends, Sherbet. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Where are you going? I don't know, anywhere. Isn't it nice to be free? <laughs> well, it's not all that nice. You'll hardly miss it. <laughs> you can hold me hand if you like. Not in the street. <laughs> Listen, Anita. You're a nice girl with a good job in accounts. But it's only fair to tell you that I'm hopeless at arithmetic. <laughs> you haven't thought of going to night school, Norman. 
I've arranged to go to the pictures. I don't mean tonight. I mean in the near future. Secure yourself better prospects. I've spent years getting used to no prospects. <laughs> you can do it, Norman. With the right person behind you. I think my mum's got my tea ready. Oh, yes. Well, I want you to think about what I said. You can be sure. But I won't sleep a wink. Say goodnight then, Norman. Good night, then, Anita. You're the only kind of knowledge They don't teach at any college You're an education in your <laughs> There are poems and romances In the glamour of your glances You're an education in yourself I was just thinking about you I was having a cup of cocoa and thinking about you, Nia. You don't think cocoa's got magical properties? I'd like a word with Miss Deborah. Bad move. Stick with me, you'll get a cup of cocoa. <laughs> Would you tell her I'm here, please? I'm not speaking to her. Tell her it's Seymour. I know what your name is. You need looking after you do. I have something to tell her. What? Well, not that it's any of your business. But I'm going to be a fighter pilot. You do need looking after. What do you want to be a fighter pilot for? You've got a good job at the co-op. Well, not exactly glamorous, is it? How glamorous do you think you're going to be when you've crashed? Well, it's not compulsory to crash. I've seen the way you drive that three-wheeler. You can forget it. I'm not going to allow it. You can keep your great long feet on the floor. Wait a minute. Now, how come it's any of your business, hmm? It is if we're going to be married. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Norbury. It's Seymour Utterthway. Oh, yes, I've seen you before. He works at the co-op. Oh, the co-op. <laughs> I wondered if your Deborah was in. No, I can't say she is. Well, would you mind telling her, Mrs. Norbury? I'm going to be a fighter pilot. I think it's stupid. You're too tall for those little planes. <laughs> My loving you meant only heartache. Your kiss was such a sacred thing to me. I can't believe it's just a burning memory. Heartache, heartache. What does it matter how my heart breaks? I should be happy with someone new. My heart. What's that creeping about for? Creeping about? These are military footsteps. Sound like hooves. These are military boots. Well, on me garb and stick me boot in it and shut up, right? <laughs> Why are you throwing him up there? <sighs> Because he's got no money and we're all coming a close second. Why is it all tall blokes are thick? <laughs> I asked a civil question. Being above average height is completely wasted on tall blokes. He's going to get into trouble sneaking in from up there. Well, have you got any money? You lend him some money. I haven't got any money. <laughs> Why should I have any spare money? I'm saving up for a dress uniform. <laughs> I really taught you how to retreat, Foggy. Just relax and help us get him on yeah. the roof. Now, when you get up there, do you know where the window is? I know where it is. Right, well, lower yourself down now, quietly, and come and join us in the stalls, all right? I know, I know. I've sneaked in before, I know. It's car. Uh, not that way, you haven't. Shouldn't it be the other way up? <laughs> I think you're right. I think you should be the other way up. <laughs> she walked him home, brazen as you like, <laughs> right up to our gate. I'm glad you're fascinated by all this. This is your own son. People are walking home. Uh -huh. I mean, what kind of a girl can she be if she walks people home? She doesn't even wear scent. Oh, I think that's cunning. I'm trying to pretend she's the kind of girl that doesn't wear scent. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Waiting for what? For a grunt. <laughs> when I tell you something, I like to hear you grunt. 
That way I know you're still alive. What do you want me to grunt about? If you want a grunt, I'll do a grunt. But it seems to me a, a bit of a beggar when you've been out papering all day and you come home and they expect you to grunt. You know, your son's being stolen from under your feet and you can't even raise a grunt. What do you mean, stolen? By this woman he's fallen in with. She's only a girl. Oh, you could say that about Jean Harlow. Well, uh, no, I don't think I'd say that about Jean Harlow. <laughs> Read your paper. Can we listen to the news? Hmm. Well, it was announced that the Imperial Airways flying boat Centurion, which met with an accident at You read the print off the paper, you listen to every Colonel news Moore, bulletin. First class mail posted in country. There's an international crisis, woman. If Hitler moves into Poland, then the balloon goes up. I just think you could be more discreet about it. I mean, suppose the Germans find out you're eavesdropping on everything that's happening. Divers are having difficulty in the... <laughs> <laughs> a row of old houses in West Bromwich has been condemned. But they're not going to pull them down, they're going to get rid of them at one stroke by blowing them up. To make a realistic ARP test. So the police push back the crowd to a safe distance and then... And almost before the echo of the explosion has died away... Where is he? He should be here by now. He's probably dropped in next door. <laughs> I knew if we left him, he'd get it wrong. I should have scouted the position for him first. You're more like a girl guide. <laughs> Where is he? Well, we can't just go up and let him in. The Mexican admiral keeps his eye on us like a hawk. Well, if he can't get in, he can't get in. We tried. I wish you'd stop just gazing. Why don't you do something? Like what? Well, I don't know anything. You're going to wear your eyes out. <laughs> there are 33 fellow drivers pitching to clamp their feet and the throttles down to the floor, chucking for position in the early laps. Jimmy Snyder, a lead for his driver from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Swanson, his car skids and starts for the outside. <laughs> 